<laughs> Oi, <clears throat> this was a bit of a hard one to indulge from you at, at some point. Again, uh, by the voice, I believe it's Sargon. By the voice, I believe it's Sargon, but to be honest, I can't really say to be honest, but actually, uh, it's come from a channel called The New Me Media. Alex Jones and the Gay Frog Holocaust. By the sounds is we're in for a good treat, by the sounds of it. So if you wanna if you don't believe that it actually is, but so let's have a look on. Oh, and by the way, pay attention to the voice, because pay attention to the voice, because it might sound a lot like Sargon, but I can't really say to be to be honest, but let's see. So when I'm shopping for a new gravity fed water filter. For some reason, every now and then... See? What I mean? Even, uh... I, I mean, I can't really just generalize again just by the voice of it. I mean, it might just be two completely person with the same with the same voice, but we never know. We never know! Wait, I missed. And I can't help but feel like I'm under attack by globalists. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic. For some reason, this makes me uncomfortably angry. Like, I'm... Ah, radioactive isotope. That's quite a little bit hard to swallow, but hey. But then again, I, I shouldn't really doubt it too much because... Uh, you know how people protest... It's actually exactly just like he's saying. By protesting, they're simply destroying us all and believing that may, that they're making the world a better place. Good fucking lord, I'd say. But yet again, they're just the incarnation of their of the Trump that they were against all the time, which makes me laugh to some extent. Which, again, I feel like I shouldn't. Being conditioned or something, and it just makes me want to buy a bigger, better water filter. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. Anyway, once I've finished, I really feel like I've accomplished something. I'll be damned if I'm just going to sit here and let the globalists poison me and my family. I have a duty, a responsibility, to get rid of this brainwashing. Brainwashing? And I do believe I, I do believe I must have paused out at the right moment. That moment when you gave her a tuna sub. Reversed, <laughs> which means bust a nut. But yeah, uh, but yeah. So then again, and by the voice, I'm really convinced it's Sargon. We're gonna have to watch a, a video of Sargon. I'm gonna have to replay the video. Let's see to compare the voice, and see which one like has like uh you know the difference. Unless then, it might be the same guy. We never know. It might be. Keep that in mind. <laughs> But then the humble merchant promoting his excellent wares will say something really out there, like... I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! And I'm just like, why the fuck would the globalists want gay frogs? I mean, a part of me knows that it's part of an organized campaign to save the Earth by depopulating the planet of humans using the gay agenda. Yeah, there it is, the gay bomb. <laughs> What the hell? The Halothes bomb and gay bomb are both in, are informal names for two theoretical non-lethal chemical weapons that a United States Air Force research laboratory is speculating about producing. The theories involve discharging female sex hormones over enemy forces to make them sexually attracted to each other. Uh, in 1944, Wright Ohio Laboratory, Ohio. The predecessor of the United States Air Force Research Laboratory produced a three-page proposal variety of a possible non-lethal chemicals weapon which would later be obtained by the Sunshine Project and Freedom of Information Act request. Uh... Ah. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, then again, this article includes a list of references, but its sources remain unclear, but it has insufficient inline citations. Please help to improve this article by introducing more precise citations. Huh. I mean, again, for some, for some 
some point it may sound like a homophobia joke a really tasteless homophobia joke doesn't it but <sighs> but then again if uh wait Oh, that possible? I mean, biologically speaking, because uh, when we were in our, when we were in our mother's uh, mom hole, of course we uh, received our chromosomes and, and so on that you know built up our DNA, which made us us. But again, that includes, of course, in the uh, in of course the uh, the. I mean, I don't know. It it kind of hurts a little bit. Because, you know, think about it in a way that uh, we, uh, in, uh, well, how might I say? Yeah, the, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I think I've got a good way to say this, because the chromosomes that, uh, you know, makes man and woman, believe it or not, we all start with X. You know, X is the, uh, female base, which, you know, is just, it's just a base. Of course, everyone has a female base, X, everyone does have, no matter what. From uh, humans, the big animals, to mere insects and whatnot. Even plants too? We never know. Because, uh, screw it. And uh, again, even though, like, uh, when we are mother's womb, uh, there and again, there's also a possibility that some people, of course, we get the, uh, the Turner Syndrome. What is a Turner Syndrome, you might be wondering? It's simple. We are only born with just a base chromosome. Of course, born female and whatnot, but really very... Unfertile and whatnot. It's you know it's it's pretty it's pretty awkward and whatnot, but hey. And uh, and yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's a fact if you look it up, which of course is it's scientifically correct, but not Wikipedia because for fuck's sake, that damn thing's more corrupt than any other uh, any other freaking pro corrupt president known to history. Body orders, leaked documents. Nobel Prize Awards. <laughs> but anyways, uh, as I was saying again about the about the bomb is that uh no about a chromosome again that uh, usually we're all born with X and X. What you well, no, well, that means the uh, the regular female recipe. Now, male would just be X and Y. These are just two. Oh, for fuck's sake! These are the two. Let's say uh. Chromosome that make that you know differs Anyway, well, not I just take the, I just took it out because I'm not in the mood to hear some white noise. I'm tired of shit And uh, let's see And yeah, then again, you might be also wondering So then again screw it uh, Screw that screw the last part because actually believe it or not uh, As at some point as we grow older when we are supposed to have let's say a, a age We're just a kid. We'll just receive a a balanced number of chromosomes. Sometimes, as we go older, it can sometimes destabilize the uh, chromosome emitters we have in our body. Which, of course, the the offspring would then, uh, let's say, generate more than just two chromosomes, resulting in, let's say, three chromosomes. Three chromosomes. You might be wondering, what the hell does that mean? <clears throat> three types of individuals can come can, can come out of that. One would be the hermaphrodite, which just be X, X, Y, or X, Y, X, simple as that. Or the super male, X, X, no, X, Y, Y, like that. Or uh, the super female, X, 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 like that, simple. But again, it's, uh, it's, it's rare to this time that things happen, so you never know. And again, I'm only just giving, let's say, the, uh, let's say just the, uh, fucking hell, I cannot speak today. I mean, just the uh, the steep version of it, which is just a, uh, let's say, it's just how it exactly works, but not. But then again, then again, let's see what else this happens. Ah, <sighs> shut up, stupid headphone. Look it up for yourself. So I did. Hmm. I went out of my way to do Young Turks level of research by going to Google and typing in. Are the globalists turning the frogs gay? Hmm. hmm. It's exactly what I thought. Google confirms they are turning the frogs gay. 
I couldn't believe that gay frogs were such big news, so I opened up a healthy living blog to find out more. They had an article titled, What the Gay Frogs Tell Us About Our Water and Ourselves. They say they find themselves puzzled by recent scientific findings about the influence of endocrine disruptors on sexual behaviour in male South African claw frogs. After being exposed in a laboratory environment to EPA-approved levels of atrazine, the second most commonly used herbicide in the US, as well as a fairly common endocrine disruptor found in water supplies, these male frogs underwent significant change in behaviour. The frogs exposed to the atrazine, as opposed to the control group who weren't, started exhibiting distinct homosexual behaviour. Not only did they engage in homosexual sex with one another, as the attending scientist Tyrone Hayes PhD said of the frogs, their behaviour became feminised. To be clear, they didn't just behave like females, but actually started producing eggs, which fertilised by normal male frogs produced male offspring. In general, if you go to an environment that's contaminated with atrazine, you find more hermaphroditic or abnormally developed males, and this hormone or endocrine disruptor, like others, poses significant risk to all populations, animal, human, homosexual, and otherwise. Well, there we have it. Then again, you. Then again, just by thought of these news, uh, I do believe that people might start to, uh, might as well just start, you know, to ban this type of. <laughs> just, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say, because if I say gender terrorist, be gender terroristic bullshit, you might as well just start thinking about that one guy with the, the pen under the nose, which is just, ugh, strange in my opinion. But fuck it, I'd say. Fuck it! And then again, uh, let's say, of course, everyone has the right free of speech and whatnot, but then again, that doesn't mean that your free of spe freedom of speech opinions go above everyone else. Again, about that, but honestly... Hmm... Getting sorry for the button to pistol the long, but hey, what can I do? <sighs> I mean, I'm extremely puzzled about hearing this too, but you know, uh... Uh, I don't know. Then again, uh, frogs are amphibian animals, so they live on both water and uh, and land. So there's that, and of course they need to have some sort of, let's say, contact with the water and whatnot, and... I don't know. I don't know. Then again, uh... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Let's see what else there is. So naturally I thought to myself, well, these sound like conspiracy theorists. So I decided to look at the study myself and see what the frog scientists had to say about it. Uh-huh. Atrazine induces complete feminization and chemical castration in male African clawed frogs. And I was like, well, that's exactly what the globalists want. Globalists want, eh? <sighs> Should have known those globalists were complete terrorists. Should I know there were none of another terrorist organization disguise? But I don't know. Also, then again, about in frog biology, just to a bit of a reminder too. Females are large, and the males are tiny. So... I don't know. Let's see. I had a look at the abstract. Atrazine exposed males were both demasculinized, chemically castrated, and completely feminized as adults. Huh. 10% of the exposed genetic males developed into functional females that copulated with unexposed males and produced viable eggs. I was gobsmacked. They're not just turning the frogs gay, they're turning the frogs trans. trans. The humble merchant didn't go far enough. Atrazine exposed males suffered from depressed testosterone, decreased breeding gland size, demasculinized feminized laryngeal development, suppressed mating behavior, Reduced spermatogenesis and decreased fertility. And I thought to myself, hmm, where have I seen all of that before? I need feminism because in a world governed by the current gender roles applied to men and women, I would not be very successful at that. If all this- Who the fuck is this guy? And if he does really hate, of course, the, uh, the old school world, then why the fucking hell does he have a, a poster right over there? That dates exactly to that age. One will never know to be true and whatnot. Fuck me. 
<laughs> no, I mean, not literally, but, you know, the, the expression again of, I know, just being baffled and whatnot about all this. Well then, I mean, there must be, there must be, let's say, a cure to this and whatnot, because, again, if I was, let's say, a real chem biochemist and whatnot, and atrazine really caused all, caused all this, so, again, there might be, let's say, a bit of a cure, if, of course, it goes a little too bad, because, you know, uh, I don't know. Sounds pretty iffy to me, I I'd say. All of a sudden, I found myself time-traveled back into the 1950s, being married with two kids, having to provide for the family, having to make all the decisions completely for everyone in the house. Oh, God, I would not do well at that at all. I'm shy. I'm passive. I'm definitely not good at making decisions for other people. That would be bad news bears. And then I just thought... What the fuck does this have to do with anything else? Despite that this guy is complete fanboy? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, but... But honestly... Uh? What the fuck is going on? Holy shit, there it is. Literal proof that we're under attack by globalists. There's a frog genocide happening oh. right under our eyes that's literally going to end in a gay frog orgy until the entire species is wiped out. And nobody cares. Oh. No wonder Alex Jones is so angry. He's just an environmentalist. I think my testosterone's going up. This just happens every time I start working out a lot again. And I uh, swam two miles this morning pretty hard and uh, ate a big fat steak last night. It's full of hormones, testosterone on its own right. So I'm going a little bit wild today, excuse me. Although there's a little something that you must be alarmed as well too about this loss of testosterone and whatnot. But then again, if your body uh, receives a, uh, out, an outer supply of uh, of uh, testosterone, then your body, let's say, main uh, testosterone level will start to lower. I mean, decreasing the, the natural testosterone levels and so on. So, again, that's, that's, it may not always be a good idea to, let's say, keep on uh, taking outer testosterone limit. That's why, again, in uh, Grand Theft Auto V, I... I don't think bull shark testosterone whatsoever. <sighs> and again, what the fucking hell is going on with all this shit? Literally, is this all this needed or what? But anyways, again, uh, there must be a bit of a, a bit of a let's say fix to it, of course, if uh. Atrazine turns is like the feminization one, and of course it might be the masculization one too, because if one goes one way, then the other must go the other way too. Simple as that. Or then again, because you know, if people, because of course, again, as I as I've seen it, let's say uh, people who go transsexual without you know a a proper lifestyle. I mean, every the good thing that they always expect to be and whatnot, be everything all good and whatnot, then. Uh, it's guaranteed that they, they honestly go, they honestly shoot themselves. And that's a true fact, of course. Uh, as, uh, as of course, if you, I mean, if you, if you even look up anything, uh, uh, transsexual, that the, ooh, this will be good or not, or was it, was it, let's say, forced or whatnot? So, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, some, th some people that are just extremely unhappy, they'll just put themselves out of their misery. No more, no less. But yeah, now that we were saying about again, let's keep this tap open, and let's do a bit of a, a bit of an investigation, shall we? Let's take uh, this right back here to the start. Let this load up here. Sargon of a cad. Hmm. Good old Sargon. Good old Sargon. Also, he does. Wait, 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 wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment. Wait, that is the secondary channel. That is the secondary channel. I mean, subscribe, of course. Let's see. About. About. The channel is a horse satire. 
Oh, it isn't the videos. It does not conform the peasant or notion of art. Huh. Well then. Very, very, very interesting. And of course you can see here that this that it is clearly edited over there. Well, interesting to know. Very, very interesting to know about, let's say, the, that you know that uh, Saigon does have his meme side, which, of course, does mean a lot. But hey, what can I do? Am I right? What can I do? So, uh, alright. So yeah, boom, it's confirmed. Also, we did, of course, see in the past about this one here. This one too. All right, this one has been has, this video here has been haunting me around for for too much. I'd say it's time we go at it. That's what we're going for this one here too. Shh, stupid. We could. Thanks, corporate news. We couldn't control the people without you. So. The esteemed God Emperor has given his first press conference since achieving the throne. Ah. And this has ruffled a few feathers because he's decided that he's not going to play nice with the mainstream media, specifically CNN. <laughs> if you're attacking us, can you give us a question? Since you're, no, Mr. President Go elect, Go Mr. Ahead. President elect, Go ahead. since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you. Not can you. you give us a chance? Your organization you're, you're is attacking terrible. our news organization. <laughs> 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 Can you state, Quiet. Mr. President elect, Go ahead. can you state categorically, a question. Mr. Don't be President elect, can you give us a question? Don't be You're rude. Us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Curl up and cry. Curl up and cry. Mr. President elect, that's not appropriate. But then again, I do have to admit that, you know, CNN used to be, let's say, my favorite uh, news source, but. <laughs> I mean, then again, in front of one way, it did look professional or not, but... <laughs> you know what? Fuck you, CNN! <laughs> Girl, curl up and cry. I don't care anymore. <laughs> As you can see, that was the president-elect telling the senior White House correspondent for CNN that he is fake news. And that was CNN's senior White House correspondent saying, Sir, this isn't appropriate. Hey now, you're a Keemstar, get your stupid... Wait. Fucking hell. Ah, uh, fucking hell. Ah. Uh. Oh. Let's write about this, let's do, let's do this one here again. Uh, since of course, a Sargon of Akkad, you do have a meme. Oh, fuck. I gotta watch this one here afterwards. But yeah, since he, since he does have a meme site, so... I said... You clumsy buffoon! All right, there we go. Hey now, you're a team star. <laughs> but then again, not to start shit or whatnot. But you know, it's just uh, to point out that that it does remind me of Team Star. <sighs> and hey, thank you, I Dubs, for making for being awesome as usual. Why the fucking hell not? I'd say. Uh, let's let's uh, let's let's pour, let's go back a little bit. Okay, here we go. Good Sargon of a cut. Still thinking, still pondering about shit and whatnot, and still trying to maintain his uh, high a uh, high level of morality, morality and whatnot. Well, of course, I'll just be vaping Fallout Three style. Fallout Three style. <laughs> Gotta use my left hand for this. Right. Somebody once told me that I could make some money by bullying some people online. So I grew a no no team and put on a stupid team and started making up 
some death lies. So wow. I'm making death threats and I'm calling through the nigger. Counting that cash on my chain, I'm growing bigger. Never you mind that I was already banned from my racist homophobic hate speech fans. Found a loophole now it's my go to boys in the online punch bowl. You never know who are my dogs. So y'all can suck on my cocks. Hey now, you're a game star, get your hat on, MLG, As you can hey see, now, that you're a game like. star, get your socio, I path, if it's all we I care about it. Okay, so again, that was pretty much like a, how, how, how much I had to, let's say, uh, had to build up for, from, let's say, in, on screen, because, hey, I just can't, I uh, just lack the, lack the, uh, I don't know, because I do have video, VSTC video player. It's believe me, it's, it's a good uh, it's a good let's say, uh, let's say video editing software, especially to you know build up the final product and whatnot. It's good and whatnot, but the thing is, uh, is it literally uh needed and whatnot? I mean, of uh, of course it's needed and whatnot, right? I mean to uh, uh, the need to let's say uh edit and whatnot. The damn thing is extremely complicated, but. What could be extremely complicated could be extremely useful if applied the right way. So you know what I mean? Okay, so let's see. Telling the senior White House correspondent for CNN that he is fake news. And that was CNN's senior White House correspondent saying, Sir, this isn't appropriate. So mainstream media voices on Twitter went and decided that this was something that would happen in North Korea. That can suck my cops. completely unjust. This was, in fact, the indications that Donald Trump was about to be a complete tyrant <laughs> because he wasn't going to talk to the media. This was particularly stupid because Trump was in the process of talking to other media outlets. He simply wasn't going to talk to CNN, and I'm sure a few others, whom he pointed to and called fake news. And that's because <laughs> they lie constantly. And I'm going to show you some of their lies, because I don't think that this is an unfair accusation. Professional liars become very good liars. And CNN and the rest of the mainstream media lie to you through omission. And in my opinion, this is the highest and worst form of lying. <laughs> this is a form of lying that is so advanced, and they have perfected to such a degree that they do not even need to tell you an untruth. In order to mislead you, you can't actually point to their statements and say this is a lie because they don't make lying statements. But by the narrative that they weave, by the story that they tell you, they deliberately leave out key pieces of information that leave you with a false impression of what happened. And that is how all of this has occurred. Because the victims of Donald Trump's ire here were CNN, I'm going to give you some examples specifically from CNN to show you what I mean. But this is not limited to CNN. Far from it. This is completely endemic to the mainstream media. And it's not limited to the left either. The right also does this. Which is why Fox News has the reputation Ooh. Fox News has. <laughs> For old lefties like myself, it's just embarrassing to watch left-wing outlets go down exactly the same path. So this is how the media lies by omission. <clears throat> Number one. Oh, you're left too, don't you? Start going. Well, that makes us... Start oh. going. You traitor. That makes us... The best of friends. I still like you. I even know your channel too. But hey... As long as no one's, uh, as long as no one's being a dick, of course, which, you know, just, uh, you know, just being friends with the bastard, you know, even, even if they're probably just stabbing the back, that I do not approve. Because of course, I'm, because of course, I remember as well, like, even of course, you know, the chance of being friends and whatnot, then suddenly come this one faggot out of nowhere, playing out the game star, and then suddenly, hey, guess what? Banned. Guess some crybaby was told, told to, to, to do so. But, I don't, but uh, to be honest, to be fully honest, I can't really say what it was. But in my, but in my opinion, fuck it, I'd say. And of course, you gotta reload myself here, so... In the meanwhile, let's see how the media lies by omission. Which means, of, which means lack of information. O-mission. They cherry pick. 
So in 2013, oh. there were riots in Milwaukee after a black police officer shot a young black man called Silville Smith. Here's a part of CNN's coverage of those riots. His family and friends holding a vigil marked by prayers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. With his sister calling for peace. Don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here. Milwaukee police say they made multiple arrests overnight. We're still waiting on those. Let's stop it here. Victim sister, don't bring violence here. After showing a clip of Silver Smith's sister apparently calling for peace, saying don't go out and riot. Well, if we actually look at the entire clip, the part of this story that they're not showing you, you will see precisely how CNN have lied to you. Oh, everything! So is Mama y'all fight for her love! Burning down shit ain't gonna help nothing! Y'all burning down shit we need in our community! Take that shit to the suburbs! Burn that shit down! We need our shit! We need our weed! I don't wear it, but we need it! Don't burn our shit down, take that shit to the suburbs, because after all, we need our weed. I don't wear it, but we need it. That's what they left out. And they left it out because this woman was not calling for peace. She was not calling to an end to riots or demonstrations. She was merely suggesting they select a new target. The outrage over this on alternative media became so great that CNN were forced to apologize. And um, I want to take a moment to clarify something from Monday. We had a report that inadvertently and wrongly characterized the plea from a Milwaukee woman whose brother was killed by police. As our viewers saw, she demanded that the violence stop in her community. Mm -hmm. But in fact, she also said that protests should instead take their violence to the suburbs. I regret that second part of her statement was not included. Yeah, she fuck you too. She the error all she wants, but it's quite clear that this was not done by accident. It's impossible to go through 30 seconds worth of that lady ranting and raving about how they should take their violence to the suburbs and accidentally take the two seconds of her making it sound like she wasn't. That was CNN cherry picking a very specific portion of footage, taking it out of context and okay. presenting it as if the person saying it meant something else. And I could find you many, many, many examples of this. But I'm not going to because there are other kinds of lies by omission that I want to cover. If you want to know more about this, you can just go to YouTube, go to the search bar, type in CNN lies, and you will find thousands of different videos on different topics of just the people in the alternative media spotting this and calling it out. The second method that the media uses to lie to you by omission is through gatekeeping. Gatekeeping. Obviously, these Ooh. mainstream media outlets have to be the ones to decide what they cover, what information they put out on their network. And normally, you would think that would include anything that is verifiably true. Mm -hmm. After all, why would you feel the need to suppress relevant information if you weren't pushing an agenda first and reporting fact second? Usually, gatekeeping occurs long before anyone starts broadcasting anything. So normally you won't see evidence of it. But when there is a live broadcast going on, then you can see it in action. Like this. What do you think Donald Trump needs to do to come out on top? Well, on the character issue, the public, you know, two thirds or more of the public know that Hillary Clinton's a liar. She can't be trusted. Oh. Now the two faces of Hillary Clinton are coming out. The fact through WikiLeaks that she says one thing uh, and <laughs> right, let's see if we can get Congressman Collins back. Obviously, we just lost the satellite feed. That sucks. Um... Uh huh. Oh, yeah, no. right. That uh -huh. sucks. That was obviously completely deliberate because Chris Collins had gone far off the CNN narrative. CNN yeah. and most of the mainstream media had lied to the public through omission by simply failing to report accurately or adequately on the WikiLeaks revelations. And it got so bad that Chris Cuomo, the oh no man just there, was actually at the point of intimating that it's illegal for the public to read WikiLeaks. And I'm not joking, it's a special exemption for the press because they have to get all of their information through the mainstream media. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from especially the, no the nuclear launch codes us and in full disclosure let's take a look at what is in there and what it means 
This was the weakest and most transparent attempt at gatekeeping I personally have ever seen. It's so obvious that he's trying to say that you should come to him and him exclusively, or at least anyone in the mainstream media, the press, and not go to WikiLeaks directly themselves. Because if you do, you are going to read things in there that run counter to Hillary Clinton's campaign narrative and will hurt her chances of the presidency. Personally, I find gatekeeping far more pernicious than cherry picking. With cherry picking, you're at least not actively silencing someone. But if during a live broadcast, you pull someone else's feed, then you're actively preventing them from providing the information that they wanted to provide at that moment. You are actively censoring them. And see? And then people complain about censor uh, censorship and oppression. <laughs> the third method that the mainstream media uses to lie to you by mission is through their own willful ignorance. Mainstream media journalists will actually go out of their way to not inform themselves about a specific topic. And just... honestly, I think this comes generally from their own political activism and confirmation bias. The best example of this that I can think of is CNN's Van Jones and his white lash. Oh, geez. This was many things. I, 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 this was a rebellion against the elites. True. It was a complete reinvention of, of, of politics and polls. It's true. But it was also mm -hmm. something else. We've talked about race. I mean, we've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. That footage was from CNN's electoral coverage on November the 8th as they were tallying in the incoming votes. And you can see that Van Jones knew that there were other issues, but he was so focused on the issue of race that he had simply not investigated them. He was convinced that this was white people striking back at black people through the proxy of the first black president. And then it became apparent that millions of Obama voters, white, middle-class, middle American Obama voters, had voted for Donald Trump. Boom! Van Jones needed to explain this, and so he decided to do his investigative journalism after the fact of Trump's victory. After the election, Van Jones, or presumably someone from his investigative team, actually decided to go to Ohio and find some Trump voters who had also voted Obama and ask them why they had done this. <laughs> and instead of saying, well, actually, it's because we're giant racists and we want to implement a white supremacy because we are, in fact, having a white lash against the black president we voted for, he found his stereotypes being shattered. Here it is in his own words. So let me give you guys a chance to respond to some of the stereotypes about all the Trump voters. All the Trump voters hate the Mexicans, they hate Muslims, uh, they don't like black people, they're just, it was the, the, all the explosive kind of racial talk was what really got everybody going. Just imagine for a second if there was a white presenter who refused to discriminate between black people, suggested that they all voted for Barack Obama and did so on the basis that he's black, and that Obama's election was a blacklash against George W. Bush's white presidency. And then, after Obama wins, he goes to find one of these black families and then parrots the negative stereotypes about them to their face, stereotypes this journalist helped create and perpetuate out of deliberate ignorance because they chose not to go to an inner city and instead simply talk about those people without actually talking to those people. Because that's exactly what Van Jones has done here. What annoys me most about this is that Van Jones is outside of his elite bubble. These are working class people. They do not earn a lot of money, and the downturn in the economy has hit them hard. And Van Jones is speaking in such a way as to insinuate that maybe he is the victim here. He is the <laughs> one who has had to challenge his beliefs. He's had his stereotypes of them shattered. And now he has to do something that's uncomfortable for him, which is admit that not all white people are racist, apparently. This wasn't actually a white lash, and these people have legitimate economic issues. And the reason that annoys me so much 
is that Van Jones' net worth is estimated to be around $1.1 million. While he's speaking to them about how he has a stereotype of them all being racist on the basis that they're white and a Trump voter, he is actually talking down to them from a phenomenal position of privilege. Funny thing to say that. <laughs> but, you know, is he actually being paid to, to see all this? Clearly, is he actually being paid to see all this? Because, let's say, 1.1 million is, of course, quite a lot of money, isn't it? Oh, wow. But anyways, uh... I do have a feeling like, uh... And these two would be possibly uh, earning around, let's say, 5.5 million per year if he was telling the truth. Which, of course, he showed out the. Which, of course, one amongst many other, ba um, one many other people showed out the wrong way of life. And so, karma just karma just bites them. When, of course, they believe that they're that they're that they are earning much. You're most likely gaining a whole lot less. So, let's see. He is part of the bubble that is the problem with American journalists. I mean, oh listen my. to the way he describes them when he takes them to the studio. Please welcome Dorinda and Scott Sykes. Right here. All the way from Ohio. All the way from Ohio. As if these people are from parts unknown remote, strange, foreign lands where they don't even speak English. They haven't learned to read or write yet, and boy, do they hold some funny opinions. Because he's been trapped inside his elite bubble for such a long time, he just doesn't even understand that people have different points of view than him, different problems, different perspectives. And if he says, well, this is a white lash because I'm focused on race, he presumes that everyone else is as well until he actually goes and speaks to them and destroys his own stereotype. This should have been done long before the actual election, so Van Jones could have informed himself as to what the people voting for Trump actually wanted. But instead, he is now doing a rearguard action, desperately trying to keep up and say, look, I'm not actually totally out of touch, I actually do have some credibility, look, here are some of those weird mythical beasts that we described as Trump supporters, and they're not actually total racists. And this is weird to him. Hmm. The mess of truth with Matt Jones. You know, uh, that was a life-changing thing for me, and I just learned so much from... Keyword. Life-changing. That's the keyword. For fuck's sake... But why? Just why, my friends? Just why to come up with all this? I'm up already, just clean and whatnot. And so just being awkward like this. Life changing experience, believe that all Trumps are this or that, whatnot. People, they do have quite a, quite a lot of different troubles and what they, not different needs and whatnot. But please, give them a chance, alright? Um, it was a, it was a, a total stereotype shatterer. And it's weird to him because he has been living in a bubble where he doesn't understand their concerns and he doesn't care. Along with many SJWs, feminists, and so on, goes and so go, so it goes on the list of people being trapped around the bubble. Wish the best thing just go ahead and just pop out the bubble. And voting Trump, voting anti-establishment, same with Brexit, has forced them outside of their comfortable bubble so that they can actually understand what's going on. This is why these votes against the establishment were necessary. The establishment themselves made it happen because of their arrogance and hubris and just complete disdain for those outside of it. By keeping himself willfully ignorant, Van Jones was lying about these people's motivations. But as far as he knew, he wasn't lying. And yet he still knew in advance of the election that there was this issue to be explored. Mm -hmm. But for him, it was just preferable to believe negative stereotypes. It played into what he wanted. I don't know about you, but I have like emotional whiplash after the last <laughs> 24 hours in American politics. Uh, last night, I got a chance to watch President Obama's speech, 
and it was this amazing kind of celebration of American democracy. Very yeah, that's the thing you guys have about the United States. It's already in the name. United. Or where the fucking hell is the unity if you only keep bashing each other for only stereotyping other bullshit and just keep on attacking about that. <laughs> Where's the unity on that? Or just gonna be some random states of America. But which you prefer? United States of America? Or just random states of America? You're gonna much prefer United instead of just being distorted. <laughs> it's fuck this is fucking wrong. It's always been fucking wrong to just go on and just bash around whatnot. <laughs> it's even in the fucking name of the country. United. Fuck's sake. Uplifting. Then this morning, I wake up to President Trump's first press conference where he's attacking the press and comparing our country to Nazi Germany. While Trump's comparison of the United States to Nazi Germany is as ludicrous as far left activists comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler, it's Van Jones's opinion that's most important here. He feels rocked by this. He is feels like he's completely taking a battering when Trump specifically calls the press liars. And yet, he is a liar. In fact, most of these people are liars. A and they have been liar. acting like a privileged class. This is why Chris Cuomo wants you to only go through him. This is why Van Jones has no idea what people in Ohio think and he thinks of it like some far-reaching remote place that only backwards peasants would go to. These people are totally Ooh. out of touch, and I think it's because they believe their own lies. They believe that all they do is speak the truth, because technically all they do is speak the truth, but they only speak half of the truth, and it's the other half that's being left out that is leaving them misinformed. So I'm not even sure that this is malevolent, necessarily. It could be that this is just a natural effect of this kind of insular culture. But either way, the results are the same. They have failed as journalists. They have failed to accurately inform the public because they failed to accurately inform themselves. And this is a dereliction of duty for a journalist. Of course, just of course to prevent the badass music from playing, but hey. Now we've known the secondary channel, of course, the, sup the supposedly comedy one. Because again, like I said again about the biological effects. Which kind of does make me feel like a, a complete buffoon by now. Like, oh no, I have been trolled by a leftist. Oh my god, he won this time. But fuck it. But fuck it, I see. The, the political views and whatnot. Of course, sometimes I might say like I'd go like completely against him. I don't want that. I don't want that. But then again, I just I I'm just the point. I really give no shit whatsoever. We're good. We're good. If not, fuck it. And again, I should really just give a shit about that whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Then again, there's Golden Shower Gate hashtag, which I'm not even gonna bother with that. And shoe on head. SJW for kids. Are you fucking kidding me? Philip Moriarty, the artist of feminist hypocrisy. Okay. Oh yeah, now that again we already were already through with these ones. Hit one and oh. Okay, never mind. This one here's already been up. Another another one up. And uh, all right. Let's uh, keep this one here on the outside. Philip, Philip Moriarty and the uh, art of films and hypocrisy. And believe it or not, again, the, uh... <laughs> then again, uh, this, uh, this Thunderfoot guy is, of course, quite a very... is extremely clever, believe it or not. A very clever, a very clever guy. My opinion, believes me, like, he's, uh, you know, kind of, he's... he's somewhat of a, uh... uh it's hard to come up with a good name and what so and whatnot. Well yeah, now let's see about this thing. I'm not even gonna bother with this shit because by the uh by the thumbnail it already looks bullshitty cringy. I'm not even gonna bother with that. So yeah, here we go. Uh right here. What is the ideological ideological root of the Black Lives Matter? 
Is it some sort of Soviet? Is this oh shy? Is this some sort of torture? Wait, this is going some sort of Soviet Soviet propaganda bullshit? We never know. Well, let's see about the torture video here. And then, of course, and say, <laughs> "Wow, uh, not to mention what in education about sociology we we do uh, we do leave quite a lot of things." Uh, <laughs> let's say quite a lot of things. Let's say without any any feeling, of course, just leave it freaking empty. I mean, if we're going to put, if we're supposed to be united, then let's fucking be united and love each other instead of being just. Uh, I don't know. But then, but then again, it's it's uh, it's natural to have some buffoons to believe that they are also, oh oh also mighty believer of that, like the feminists believe that all women are superior to men, women and men are just bullshit slaves who do just the job and whatnot, and to just go home and kill themselves and die in the hole and whatnot. Yeah, I think I don't know, but I actually do know, and quite a lot because hey, sociology, research and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Press that play button too hard, but now I do mean to play it. The fuck just happened? Oh, oh, it changed. It changes color. Okay, it's good to know. So by now you've undoubtedly seen the torture video that was live streamed to Facebook on someone's personal Facebook by one of the alleged people involved. One of the main points of contention is people mistaking these people for Black Lives Matter activists oh. due to the rhetoric they were using while they were torturing the young man. That's Police so. have found no direct links between the people committing the act and the Black Lives Matter movement. So oh. it seems that the use of this language was incidental. The suspects are facing several charges. Among them is the charge of a hate crime. The attorney's office said that they are being charged with aggravated kidnapping, aggravated unlawful restraint, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, and residential burglary. They are also charged with a hate crime, although Chicago police did say that they don't believe he was targeted because he was white, despite profanities made by the accused assailants about white people and President-elect Donald Trump. Okay, so apparently by having an opinion, a political opinion, it is, it is, uh, deadly. At this point in time, the only thing I can say that about my political opinion is that we all should be giving Russia love. And boom. Alright, let's see what else we got. They instead believe that the man was targeted because of his special needs and not his race. But special needs is a category that is protected under hate crime laws. And so this does count as a hate crime, just not a racially motivated one. Many people were annoyed at the authorities' apparent attempt to downplay what had happened, saying, You know, although they are adults, they're 18. Kids make stupid, I shouldn't call them kids, they're legally adults, but they're young adults, and they make stupid decisions. I but then again, this, let's not forget about the term man-child, which is a full-grown man with a mind still stuck in the childhood era, area, or era, whatever you, whatever you wish to prefer, whatever you prefer. That seems more fitting. I don't think that kidnapping a man for 48 hours and torturing him while live streaming it on Facebook counts as a stupid decision. It is clearly sadism that they demonstrate in this live stream, where they are laughing at torturing this kid. These people are responsible for their own actions, and there is, as I've said, no direct link between them and Black Lives Matter. And it's important to note that the Chicago branch of Black Lives Matter have openly denounce this on Twitter, which is to their credit. But this leaves us with the question, why were so many people so ready to accept that Black Lives Matter was responsible for this? And the answer lies in the rhetoric the torturers were using. What? Donald Trump! Why people? What? No. The mainstream media, the progressive press, are acting as if they have no idea why people would think that Black Lives Matter would say something like fuck Donald Trump or fuck white people. They're acting as if they, they just simply don't know. And I'm sorry, you know that is entirely disingenuous 
and if you don't, I'm just going to hold your hand through the repeated racial abuse that Black Lives Matter supporters hand out to people whenever they are covered by any kind of media outlet. There are many examples, mm. such as kill white people, Black Lives Matter graffiti in Florida alarms residents. Graffiti that reads, kill white people and Black Lives Matter has angered residents in Florida's Hillsborough County after protesters left the message at two separate locations. Police were investigating this week the graffiti markings found in Brandon, a small community near town. And again, of course, uh, racism and whatnot, again, well, we never, we never really know. We'll never know for sure. Even Sargon will never know. No one will ever know. And especially again, of course. Black Lives Matter. Really did start out again as a movement, of course, to show that Black Lives didn't matter, whatnot, instead of a. Well, instead of what people see, are seeing it now, but. And hey. I can only imagine what what would have happened if, let's say, that the supposed hate crime was indeed linked to the uh, to the, the hate to the Black Lives Matter, but it's not. We should be thankful for that. We should be quite very thankful too. Tampa in Central Florida, according to media reports, but this isn't necessarily a Black Lives Matter issue because this could have been a false flag attack. As we saw in the example of a black man burning an African-American church and painting vote Trump on the wall in order to try and frame Trump supporters. That's a little awkward. But, uh, he tried. Although the perfect crime never exists. So we will disregard this example. We can't ignore the example of Black Lives Matter protesters disrupting students in the Dartmouth University Library screaming, fuck you, you filthy white fucks. In a critical editorial, the conservative Dartmouth Review listed some epithets hurled by the protesters. Fuck you, you filthy white fucks. Fuck you and your comfort. Fuck you, you racist shits. In addition, the review reports that some of the protesters became physically violent. Men and women alike were pushed and shoved by the group. If we can't have it, shut it down, they cried. Another woman was pinned to a wall by protesters who unleashed their insults shouting, filthy white bitch in her face. This is not an isolated event, it is part of a larger pattern. There is this example from the 2016 riots in Charlotte. You're talking um, to Philadelphia right now. Philly, hey, what up Philly? I don't got no family out there, but I love y'all black people. Okay. White people is hypocrites. Okay. They're barbaric. Okay. You said kill all white people. You really feel no, that No, I way? didn't. I said white lives don't matter. See, oh, white, see, white, that's, that's okay, your white, that's okay, your white, okay. what they call it. Well, uh, do you really Yellow journalism, you really, but this is lies. Let me ask you this. this do you really lie. believe that white lives don't matter? Of course. I'm not a liar. Okay. Like you. Okay. You just lied on me. On live TV. Is this like really you. live? This is live TV. So live TV. Right there, black power. Black power. You white lives do not matter. You told white me. White lives don't matter. If only all of the bigots were so open. He's not a liar. He just thinks white lives don't matter. The Charlotte protests were of the shooting of Keith Lamont Scott. And this is what his brother had to say about white people. No. No. Guys, is there anything we should know? No. You just know that all white people are fucking devils. And make sure you air that one. Air, air that, that shit. Now. Don't take that All down. white cops are fucking devils and white people. All white well, cops then. and white people are fucking devils. Well then. Well then again, of course, people are indeed angry and... Uh, Sometimes it's the only way that they can let it out is the, the first idea they have with the head. Which of course is always the worst idea too, but hey, let's see what else it has here too. They want you to hear that. That's their opinion and they are not afraid to tell you. There appears to be a general conflation of white people and police amongst Black Lives Matter supporters and protesters. So it should come as no surprise that some of these Charlotte protesters simply don't believe that a black cop killed Keith Lamont Scott. They uh... say, I don't believe it was a black cop. That's just what they're telling us. Well, that's the white supremacy for you. But it's this conflation between white people and police that makes Black Lives Matter protests like this one so disturbing. 
Oh. There have been many calls for violence that have come out of Black Lives Matter protests. And often these kind of callous racist statements come from the founders of Black Lives Matter chapters themselves, such as Toronto Black Lives Matter co-founder who asked Allah for strength not to kill white people. No. Oh. Even religion too and whatnot, eh? Well, again, this is exactly the idea of the world we, are li we live in. The full tweet reads, Please, Allah, give me strength not to cuss slash kill these white men and white folks out here today. Please, please, please. Kigali has made violent statements before. At a rally outside police headquarters, she spoke into a megaphone, saying, If you think this is the end, you are irresponsible. It is irresponsible for you to feel safe. Do you hear me, police? Do you hear me, police? It is irresponsible for you to feel safe. If we are not safe, you are not safe. And this should come as no surprise as this is the ideological root of the Black Lives Matter hashtag, as told to us by one of the people who created the tag in the first place. Alicia Garza. That is... wow. Oh, she didn't? So she was the one who started all. And of course, seeing the way how it is, I mean, this is the point where now it's going to enter into history of, you know, history of sociology, history itself, and so on. Well, of course, this entire, this entire era that we're living in is literally a fucking historical moment. Of course, instead of living a, a, a nice, a nice peaceful time, complete batshit crazy era, I'd say. Go on. Do it. Alicia Garza says, I created hashtag Black Lives Matter with Patrice Cullors and Opal Tometi, two of my sisters, as a call to action for black people after 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was posthumously placed on trial for his own murder and the killer, George Zimmerman, was not held accountable for the crime he committed. It was a response to anti-black racism that permeates our society and also, unfortunately, our movements. In 2014, heteropatriarchy and anti-black racism within our movement is real and felt. It's killing us and killing our potential to build power for transformative social change. When you adopt the work of queer women of colour, don't name or recognise it and promote it as if it had no history of its own, such actions are problematic. When I use Asata's powerful demand in organising my work, I always begin by sharing where it comes from sharing about Asata's significance to the Black Liberation Movement and its political purpose and message is and why it's important in our context. Here's an excerpt from her demand, To My People. Black brothers, black sisters, I want you to know that I love you and I hope somewhere in your hearts you have love for me. Uh -huh. My name is Asata Shakur, slave name Joanne Chesimard. Yes, she, she actually uses slave name. And I'm a revolutionary. A black revolutionary. By that, I mean I have declared war on all forces that have raped our women, castrated our men, and kept our babies empty-bellied. Oh. I have declared war on the rich who prosper on our poverty, the politicians who lie to us with smiling faces, and all the mindless, heartless robots who protect them and their property. I am a black revolutionary, and as such, I am a victim of all the wrath, hatred, and slander that America is capable of. Like all other black revolutionaries, America is trying to lynch me. And of course, written America like the German one. I protrude the, uh, the, the other one as Nazis and whatnot. But then again... What's really fun again, being Brazil, is actually the, that, the racism, the, the, that the racism there of, in slavery was actually way fucking bigger than, than the one in the United States, but... Again... People are actually way more united than this. Wow. Fuck me. I am a black revolutionary, and by definition, that makes me a part of the Black Liberation Army. And still not the black... It's not the Black Lives Matter. It's the, uh, the Black Liberation Army. Huh. BLA. Not BLM. Both are completely different, aren't they? The pigs have used their newspapers and TVs to paint the Black Liberation Army, 
As vicious, brutal, mad dog killers, they have called us gangsters and gun moles and have compared us to such characters as John Dillinger and Mar Barker. It should be clear, it must be clear to anyone who can think, see or hear, that we are the victims. The victims and not the criminals. It ends with this refrain that is being chanted across university <clears throat> campuses all across America. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Mm. It is our duty to fight. It is our duty to fight. It is our duty to win. Ah, uh, well, the so-called white guilt, it seems. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. I mean, it is our duty to fight. It is our duty to fight. Over there, the one that foreigner. thing is that, uh, that that is actually unity people being united whatnot but again for your affection I've already disorganized affection to Wow fucking this is a bloody dog Teacher was wow. Fuck me. Holy fucking shit. This undeniable cult behavior is being built on the radical revolutionary ideology of a black power ideologue. The sort of person who murdered a policeman and then fled to Cuba where she resides on the FBI's most wanted list. And the thing is Attacks by black people against white people on the basis that they are white 
are something that happens. It's just something that occurs. Toronto. Man yells, fuck white people during machete attack and is not charged with a hate crime. An African-American man from Queens, New York, yelled, fuck white people before launching an unprovoked machete attack on a random 30-year-old white male outside a mall in Toronto is being charged with attempted murder, aggravated assault, assault with a weapon, possession of a weapon, but he's not being charged with a with hate, a hate crime. crime. There's no... That's the funny thing, I give in. No hate crime. But... But hey... It's better off to keep it like that. It's better. It's certainly better off to keep it like that. Cause uh, yeah, it's it, it it could be worse. It literally could be worse. But thankfully, it isn't. So better off just keep it like that. Obviously, if the races were reversed in this situation, but as with the recent kidnapping and torture, there's nothing specifically linking this attack to Black Lives Matter. But that doesn't mean that there aren't also attacks that happen that are directly linked to Black Lives Matter. And given the violent, revolutionary ideology that underpins it, I'm hardly surprised. Veterans brutally attacked by Black Lives Matter says Army Staff Sergeant. He said that race has everything to do with it. As I was getting my face stomped in and thrown through a window, all four of them were yelling racial slurs about how whites sucked and black lives were better. Something along those lines, in case you were wondering. What about a 17-year-old white Alabama kid who was beaten inches from death by Black Lives Matter supporters? This was at a high school, and the principal knew about these threats in advance from- You know, this is an exact, exact type of cuckold that, you know, school directors really, really make me worried. Especially by the fact that, you know, uh, when, it, when, it, when it literally comes that this cuckold of a director knows about the threats but won't do anything about it, clearly going to be held responsible for this whatsoever. Again, of course, as uh, you know, not doing anything about it and not even exercising his own power as a director, because, hey, what if the kid was black was that was beaten... Well, that was literally, that was almost beaten inches from death. Even it doesn't matter if it was Black Lives Matter for anything. It, it wouldn't matter, but even still, it wouldn't re really matter the, uh, the movement. A human being is still a human being, no matter what. From pro-Black Lives Matter students, this kid was being targeted because he supported the police. And oh. so the police have issued a statement to say that they don't know whether it's a hate crime or not. Well, it might not be. It might simply be because of his political affiliation. But what difference does it make? This kid was hospitalized because of his political opinion. And this was done to him by a group of black students who have been radicalized by Black Lives Matter. And you actually have people in defense of this kind of thing, such as a black lawyer who says, Free anyone charged with murdering whites. Oh, wow. Black people are lucky enough to get on a jury that could use the power to acquit any person charged with a crime against white men and white male institutions. It's not about the race of the defendant, but if the alleged victim is a white guy or his bank or his position or his authority, we could acquit. Assault, acquit. Burglary, acquit. Insider trading, acquit. Murder? What the hell do you think is happening to black people out here? What the hell do you think we're complaining about when your cops shoot us or choke us? Acquit. This is something that intellectual black people with legal training talk about. Honestly, what the hell do you expect us to do? How do white people think we're supposed to react when we watch cops murder us and get away with it over and over again? We're just supposed to take it? Wait for America to produce nicer white people? The options for black America in the face of this state-sponsored injustice seem pretty limited. Where does this ideology not have supporters? Hard to say, actually. Hard to say, but you know, even people who are radicalized by this thing, I don't know. At some point, if it was a shit post, I would probably be laughing about all this. But unfortunately, it isn't. It is not shit posting. It is not. So again, only proves out to be more. You know, just to add up onto the uh, the list of good things. Holy fucking shit.
Why is the mainstream media not calling this out? These activists dichotomize this as a race war between blacks and whites, and this is radicalizing people who don't even understand the ideology. The most egregious example comes from the Milwaukee riots. Hey, they beating up every white person. Man, no white person come down Sherman. He white. Beat his shit. And that is it. He's white. Beat him. He's white. Get them. Get the white people. That's what Black Lives Matter has radicalized these protesters into thinking. Here is the first-hand account of a Politico journalist, and Politico are renowned for their neutrality and objectivity. You're Asian, right? Why are you even here? What I learned when I was attacked and spared because of my race at a Black Lives Matter protest. I can see from your face that you don't think you're safe, he told me. He was black. I'm Chinese American. You are. You're a minority too. Shortly after I arrived, the beginnings of a shoving match between a line of policemen in riot gear and the distraught residents of the neighbourhood. I was the only non-black person there at the time. The other news crews had left, and my presence was soon questioned. Some pointed me out as an interloper. Others, like the reassuring activist, told me I would be fine. I brushed off the more hostile comments as, I, as much as I could. They were angry, and anger doesn't always hit its intended target. That's true. As the confrontation went on, the crowd became more and more violent. What started as shoving and rock throwing escalated into smashing cars and setting businesses aflame. By nightfall, I was crouching behind a Chevy Suburban to avoid bullets. Another intern, a white man who had later arrived on the scene to take photos, huddled beside me. After the gunfire ceased, he emerged from behind the car to take more pictures while I stayed behind. Get your white ass out of here, he soon heard. You better not let me fucking catch you. After trying wow. unsuccessfully to defuse the situation, my colleague was flying down the street with a group of men chasing him. Wanting to help, but not knowing how, I decided to run after them. In order to run faster, my colleague dropped the two bulky cameras hanging around his neck. When I tried to retrieve them and yelled at him to get out of the area, some in the group of rioters started chasing after me too. As the former back-of-the-pack runner in middle school gym class, I wasn't surprised when they caught me. They threw me to the ground, I reflexively curled up into a ball. Blows landed on my back, head, and torso. Ow. Stop. He's not white. He's Asian. I wasn't sure who said it or how they knew my race, but within seconds, the punches stopped. Someone grabbed me by the arm and lifted me up. As my vision came back into focus, I saw a group of concerned black faces and I heard someone repeating, Don't fuck with Chinese dudes. My attacker had run off. Oh. Those who had intervened escorted me to safety. Oh, wow. The only reason this man was spared is because they realized he wasn't white. Until then, they had... Well, very, very lucky fella, I'd say. Very, very lucky. ...mistaken him for a white man and had proceeded to beat him on the floor because of it. There is no excusing this. That is a hate crime. These people are perpetrating hate crimes. And the worst part about this as the constant excuses being made by this journalist himself. Listen to this. Uh. What I was really afraid of, though, is that the incident would stoke their distrust of Black Lives Matter. While I don't condone the attacks on my Journal Sentinel colleague and me, I don't think our experience represents the movement overall. I'm sorry, I think it does. I think that when a bunch of radical black activists take a criminal who is currently in exile as their leader, as their ideological inspiration for the entire thing. So, their leader is pretty much a, an incarcerated criminal. Hmm. Honestly, I never knew, actually. Never even knew. But hey. And again, but what if the, uh... Huh. What if, what if the guy was native, and they attacked the, the native guy? I mean, wow. What if? Just what if, you know, and the, and the native guy was just attacked by that? Doesn't matter if Milwaukee or whatnot. The tribe, I mean, just literally attacked or not, I mean, I would be just baffled by all it. 
and then that translates down the line to you being at a Black Lives Matter protest and being beaten based on your race and it turns out they made a mistake and then stop when they discover you aren't white that is reflective of Black Lives Matter not all of them maybe not every single one but clearly enough for this to be a persistent problem with the movement it produces violent radicals who will attack people on racial grounds this is irredeemable i can only imagine the hell that would be unleashed if this was a black person being beaten for being black at a ku klux klan rally black lives matter should be treated like the ku klux klan because they are two sides of the same rotten coin they are just racial supremacy movements but then again what about the the black panthers i mean it's pretty much of course the uh, kkk but from the past again from 80s and whatnot but kind of does make me feel like we're neglecting that at some point too you know i do I'm, you know but just talking about all just just throwing out loud but this gave me a feeling like, like we're neglecting something here too. This is the ideological root of Black Lives Matter. If you support that, then you support this. You support the radicalization of black people against white people. That's what Black Lives Matter is fundamentally, at its most basic. That's what the ideology is in Black Lives Matter. I can't believe I have to keep explaining this, but by God, I am sick of apologists in the mainstream media constantly making excuses. And of course, I'm not surprised at all when these very same apologists will lie directly about me. Ex Gorka property Gizmodo printed this. Alt-right trolls use Chicago kidnapping to spread lies about Black Lives Matter. Paul Joseph Watson started the hashtag BLM kidnapping. And wow. it's fair to criticize him for Holy doing this. Shit. There is no evidence that Black Lives Matter is connected to the four torturers. They use the same rhetoric, but that does not mean they are necessarily the same. But as we've seen, that doesn't mean Black Lives Matter are completely ameliorated. However, he did jump the gun. He didn't know, and he used that for propaganda value. The author of this article, Brian Menegas, then claimed that I carried on accusing Black Lives Matter of this as well. A statement that is simply not true. Naturally, I confronted him about this on Twitter and asked him, is there any reason that you decided to lie about me in your article? I stated outright that these people were not connected to Black Lives Matter. He then quotes a tweet that I did put out, saying, silence from the usual progressive race-baiting outlets over BLM kidnapping is deafening. That's not me saying Black Lives Matter are responsible for BLM kidnapping, the event that became known on Twitter as BLM Kidnapping. And he accuses me of adding credence to a hashtag that forwards that agenda. Well, I'm sorry, Brian. That fucking hurts. Of stupidity. But I use the Black Lives Matter hashtag all the time. I'll probably use it in the title of this video. Does that make me a supporter of Black Lives Matter? Or is it that hashtags are a way of having a conversation on Twitter? This is the way that people who are interested in having the same conversation organize and coordinate. And it, it was up to Encyclopedia Dramatica to call him out on this lie. He then decided to accuse me of being responsible for other people's actions, saying, a quick collection of your followers' responses to those tweets. You knew this caused confusion and did nothing to rectify. Total nonsense. I specifically did not cause confusion, and if he'd actually read these tweets, he would see that this was not as he thinks. There are people in here calling me out saying, does the KKK represent all white people? Or there are people there saying, well, do you have any evidence of this? And me saying no, but that's what's trending, which is why I'm using it. Or other people saying, look, it's just a hashtag. You can't accuse people of lending it credence, unless, of course, he thinks I am that credible in which I take the compliment. He simply doesn't care that he's lying. He thinks he can get away with it if he twists what I've actually said to try and fit his agenda. He has done nothing but guilt by association and accusing me of controlling other people, 
as if the people following me on Twitter are card-carrying mem- Give me a break for now. Give me a break for now, because... <laughs> look at this. Just look at it. How... Oh, man. Supposed to be united. Everyone to be united together. But hey, this ha this thing happens instead. Oh jeez. I missed. Members of a club or an organization of which I am in charge. This total nonsense would have been slightly less bad if I hadn't already done a live stream, which I will link in the description. Which, in the first minute of which, I say this. So we're going to be talking about the BLM kidnapping. Um, so, as I am aware, what we know so far huh. is that was it four eighteen-year-old black kids, two men, two women, uh, kidnapped a mentally handicapped or some sort of uh, special needs kid on the basis that he's white, tortured him for about half an hour while live streaming on Facebook, uh, shouting things like "fuck Donald Trump," "fuck white people," and they were basically using him as the scapegoat. Well, then again, uh, it was pretty much, let's say, aimed. Well, it was, it was, let's say, it can be easily pointed out, as, you know, just easily pointed out. But, the, but here's, here's, the, here's, here's the key word, pointed. Not confirmed or whatnot. So that's the thing. For this, um, this political sort of position. Uh, people are using the hashtag BLM kidnapping, even though there's no evidence to tie them specifically yeah. to Black Lives Matter. So I think that's important to state from the outset. Because oh yeah. The, the the I have to say I'm quite annoyed, and Robin, I'm sure you'll you'll be annoyed at the same sort of thing with people tying this directly to Black Lives Matter in the same way that you know anytime you need Sarkeesian got a nasty message on Twitter, people yeah. Oh, cool, of course. I was part of Gamergate. I was a strong supporter of the Gamergate hashtag, and I know how frustrating it was to have every single little thing that happens attached to your hashtag, whether it was part or not, regardless of the actual evidence. And that was the very first thing that we talked about. There is nothing connecting this and Black Lives Matter to the best of our knowledge, but that doesn't mean that Black Lives Matter is entirely innocent in this situation. Black Lives Matter is an ideologically supremacist movement with the goal of radicalizing black people against what they call the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. And this is manifested, in their opinion, in white people themselves, which is why Black Lives Matter supporters indiscriminately target white people at their violent rallies. I am so, so tired of them being protected because they are black. And that's what the mainstream media is doing. That's what the police are doing when they refuse to classify these attacks as hate crimes. This is institutional protection of a racist movement. If the police were downplaying KKK crimes, then I would have exactly the same opinion. Because there is precisely zero fucking difference between the two movements. But again... It should come as no surprise to me that these people are being defended by progressive ideologues and that these people will lie about me in particular, calling me alt-right and saying that I absolutely did something that I did not because they think they can keep their feet steady on the shifting sands of public opinion. They can't. They're losing and they know it. But then again, they're losing and they know it. That's the key phrase. Because, hey, only now, only then it'll be, let's say, a bit of a... Only then it'll be, let's say, a matter of time until whatever whatever next will happen out through, through time and whatnot. Still, do we still have plenty of time for... Another 14 minutes, I suppose. Oh yeah, but then again, like Sir Con like Sir Gon said, oh, of course, good man. Uh, but honestly, <sighs> well, the only thing I have for the, that I can't say about it is, you know, just uh, <clears throat> sorry.
say about that. But it's, well, one thing that I can say about that is, you know, brace for impact. Because something's going to be hit. Something's going to hit us soon. And not just something, something just little. Something's big's coming. Very big. And we got to be ready for it. No matter what it is. Just got to be ready for it. Oh yeah, let's, now let's see about uh, the art of feminine hypocrisy. By, you know, the clever Thunderfoot. Seriously, I just thought Moriarty. You know, the one who couldn't go anywhere without telling everyone he was a professor of physics. Oh. I'm a scientist. I'm not going to bang on about this. I know others in the YouTube community bang on about this quite at length. So my name is Philip Moriarty. I'm a professor of physics at the University of Nottingham. Um, I'm a professor of physics... University of Nottingham. It is indeed Professor Moriarty. Well, yeah. Before I thought. Well, then. I, well, then again, uh, isn't it true that uh, you can look up people's name, as, as and is in the staff of, let's say, a university that they claim to be in, and then to see, like, if they are actually professional there or not. Hey, I mean, that could be there, but who knows. Also, then again, are peering like assholes. Everybody, everybody's got one. Oh, hmm. Hold on a sec. Mm. I just burped it now, like a piece of puke just got. I, uh, it almost got up to my nostrils. It feels awful. Hmm. Anyways, like I was saying here, like. Uh, Okay, I forgot. Well, he was just an asshole. Not that that greatly matters. A lot of scientists are assholes. But Jesus, is he a socially clueless asshole? I mean, beyond the interactions I had with him, I just came across this stream of him with Baring, and God, is he an insufferably smug jerk. Always telling people to be the uh, bigger man, to act their age. He, he, he spazzes out a bit, people on his own side. Oh, stop with the, stop with the spazzes out language, will you? You said you wanted a growing up chat. You, could, could you stop with the, 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 the tedious... What is, what, just, if you don't mind, I, I don't want you to dox yourself and you can just refuse to answer this, but what age are you, Patrick? I'm 32. So start look, acting like a 32-year-old. Well, that's interesting, uh, uh Professor Moriarty. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. I mean, why is he being such a bit of such a dick to to bearing? We all love bearing. Hashtag love bearing. Boom. He did a collaboration with Kevin Logan, a co-worker, and it went a little something like this. You're in your forties, Philip, and a reasonably accomplished postdoctoral researcher with a PhD in chemistry. I can't believe it's entirely beyond your wit to address my points without sounding like a seven-year-old child in a playground. Actually, that's rather unfair. I mean, my son's seven and he's capable of much wittier and pithier reposts than her, her head up your arse. So let's see how Professor Moriarty and co-worker show their maturity in representing me, shall we? What the fuck? Kind huh? Crazy, um, Professor, but I'm not entirely certain that photoshopping someone's head onto a masturbating baboon is really an argument worthy of a, a professor. Of physics. So my name is Philip Moriarty. I'm a professor of physics at the University. Of so, ironically, that one man literally just photoshopped someone's head into onto a masturbating baboon and called it a day, and put some sexy music on it. How old are you? For fuck's sake! Even I can do shit better than that. And believe me, my shit's not always, let's say, to get comments and whatnot. And I, and I does feel I can do shit better than that. Way better. In his 40s, no less. 40s. <laughs> yes, Professor Moriarty did do all the recordings of the voices in this video himself. Oh, did he? Kevin Logan to read my... Thunderfoot Unhinged. The case of Professor Moriarty in the email supremacy. A worthy collaboration, Professor. Indeed, I would probably go so far to say you've permanently waived all rights to ever call anyone childish again. So I'll stop with the stop with the spazzes out language, will you? You said you wanted a growing up chat. You, you could could you stop with the the, 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 the the tedious What age what just if you don't mind, I, I don't want you to dox yourself and you can just refuse to answer this, but what age are you, Patrick? I'm thirty two. 
So start looking, uh, acting like a 32 year old. Go Sorry. Shut up. Okay, go on. Fucking Please don't tell me to shut up, Patrick. I've not. You have the right to tell to shut the fuck up anytime given, you, di you jackass. I not once told you to shut up. That's very rude. Oh, yeah, that's right, you're very rude. Take it like I'm mad, shorty. Even people tell me to shut the fuck up all the time. And do I, do I fight back like that? Fucking hell, I don't. It'd just be a waste of time, what not? That's very rude, Patrick. Oh, that's very rude. Now he chastises Barry for his intellectual property violation. And to go on and on about it. And every time you mention Brand, I'm going to remind you that you ripped off that intellectual property. Okay? Intellectual property. So, continue. Moriarty was keen to brand Barry as a thief. You admit freely that nicking that intellectual property... No, I didn't nick anything. I didn't nick anything. Let's, 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 let's be specific here. Barry quite rightly says, this is bullshit. Copyright infringement is not... Yeah, got, I got you now. I got the bad guy. See? Like this. And there goes the bad guy again. Stealing. It's, it's, that's, that's, why they have, that's why they have laws for stealing and theft, and they have laws for copyright infringement. If you steal something, it means that the, per the original owner doesn't have that thing anymore. And of course, he was actually a furry too, with their own, his own fursona as well too. Hooray! Big fucking deal too. If I steal your car, you no longer have a car. If I wow. use your, your, your cartoon bear picture, it's not theft. It's, it's, it's copyright infringement, but it's not theft. And I'd appreciate it if you'd, if you'd stop fucking falsely accusing me of, of being a thief. Yeah, the uh, professor. You know... Uh, sometimes I do have a... <laughs> you know, sometimes I do have to admit that even though it does, it does give that feeling to, let's say, go ahead and give Barry a hug, but sometimes it also gives a feeling like he'll rip my jaw and butt rape me and butt rape me with it simply doesn't have a clue what he's talking about here. Now, in reality, Barry using somebody else's cartoon was in the grey area. Hell, I wouldn't have taken it to court. Because again, but the, the very good funny thing about, of course, uh, of course, it, it does look like the bear from Troll, Troll Jamal, a children's cartoon. Big fucking deal. Because again, everyone's character does, of course, start off with a bit of a point of inspiration. That point of inspiration is the start of a whole something completely different. Because believe me, even if uh, you had something favorite around, that did some start off something completely unoriginal. Because in over time, it did grow original. And like you see, uh, you see, uh, hold on, you see this fellow over here, where I'm putting a gun at. He used to be, uh, he used to let's say be something completely shit and whatnot. Hey, over time, I I see, I saw. What needs to change? And it did change! Now it's a whole lot better! <laughs> and so why the fucking hell can Baron and can, why the fucking hell can Baron cannot be like that? He only must be bashed around like a children's cartoon character and he'll just be just being a fanboy white knight bullshit about it. For fuck's sake. I'm sorry if I do cuss a lot because, you know, deep inside, it hurts, I'm tired and I'm angry. But it wasn't a wholesale ripoff of someone else's work. He wasn't just copying a movie and selling it or something. <laughs> it infringed on someone else's intellectual property, sure. But quite often how these things work, just like say for instance, Huey Lewis and Ghostbusters or, or Freddie Mercury and David Bowie versus Vanilla Ice, such disputes are typically settled by things like royalties. Now, I'll be honest, what Baring did was outrageously dumb. But I gotta say, I was equally impressed with the speed at which he managed to resolve wow. that dispute and get his channel back. Whoa. And I tip my hat to the man for that. He had a really quite weak position and walked away with essentially everything he wanted. Well, well, of course. Sometimes we do, we do learn by, let's say, playing it dumb. But then again, we actually do learn quite a lot of things. And by the looks, it does seem like I would need a haircut. Or just let it go, like be emo, <laughs> be some sort of emo, or whatnot. Just let it, just let it grow, grow over the hair. Let's see, like, ah, uh, yeah, emo. But hey, let's keep. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. You know what? 
<laughs> Call me crazy and whatnot, but... Ah. Uh, damn, if, if only I had more hair around. But hey. Now I, do, now I do look like a completely different person, but I wouldn't need to... <laughs> Come over up here too, because it... Because it does look a little awkward. Yeah, so which so which means again that I know, I know, my hair doesn't mean all look good here for the time being, but then why the fucking hell am I doing this? Not even I know. <laughs> so far, this is like the biggest part so far. But hey, maybe maybe that's the right thing. Maybe that's a good thing what I can do here. See? Uh, wait, hold on a sec. I don't know what I don't know what the fuck just got into me, but. Fuck it. There you go. Got myself a mohawk. See? I'm a punk now. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Let's see. Let's see how big I can make this thing here. <sighs> oh, yes, I'm punk now. <laughs> cool stuff. Good stuff. I'm gonna smash a little bit of mohawk, but that's good. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'll start looking like a Sonic character at some point. If I, of course, if I do, if I, if, but again, I'm not like Kenny here, like it would be a bit of a bad idea or not, but hey, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, then again, uh, hold on. Hey, look at that. I do look like someone completely different. Oh uh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, but fuck it. Let's just get a move on. Should probably take a bath afterwards. Well played, dude. Well played. The great irony is, though, that while Moriarty was constantly berating people for using avatars and pseudonyms, and saying, why didn't they just have the courage to... Oh yeah, how about I change my profile picture to Kurt's a Curly Dog and call it a day, huh? Yeah, so this wimp would start this, would start uh, would start ahead and go on and just crying about how people cannot go on and just on battling about whatever the fucking hell they want to use for their own avatar icon. Nothing personal, but uh, <laughs> what the fucking hell is he trying to achieve here? Apart, let's say, be another be another one of those assholes, which uh, you know. Of course, I do have to admit that some of them, they really tried to censor me of, let's say, my artwork that I did. Saying that it did look like Sonic shit and whatnot, but hey, fuck it. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, now this yeah, style is definitely gonna make me famous and whatnot. <laughs> well, yeah, leave it like this in here. I'd say this looks, it looks, this, I'd say this looks pretty darn good. Pretty, pretty darn good. <laughs> ah, it looks good. Except now that I would need to let it let it grow here most of the size and whatnot because hey Uh shit. Yeah, I mean it, this of course isn't really needing to let's say I need more hair to to me look myself better and whatnot. Ah eh, fuck it. I mean at least this one here for the front tips is good enough. I mean that is if my hair doesn't start fall doesn't start falling and whatnot. I do plan on getting big hair, why not? Long hair, too. Whatever. To stand by their words. You seem to think that I care what you look like. I don't care. I make this point time and time. How fucking sarcastic. And again, I couldn't care less who you are. But what I do care is that you lack the intellectual integrity, the courage, and just the courage in general. Why? Just because someone cannot look like a, another character from some reason just because they like it or just want it to be like, feel like that. Fucking hell, what the, what the fucking hell is wrong with this guy's problem anyways? Should I, should I try to do, let's say, uh, my own character, let's say, in the Total Drama Island style? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I, I mean, I don't know if I get, even get the, the, uh, the cartoon series names right, but hey, screw it. To actually do this slagging off to make your point without hiding behind the cartoon bear. And well, yeah, this is the guy who deleted all of his accounts and quit YouTube. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> that was a guy 
who literally got bearing off YouTube, and then he just he didn't, then he just didn't, then he just ran away with with his tail between his fucking legs. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you literally fucking kidding me? That guy literally. Fuck's Shit, sake. That's not just hiding behind an avatar. That's that's just hiding. And if it makes you feel more comfortable, I promise to use your Thunderfoot handle during the debate. I can't say fairer than that now, can I? I know how important your pseudonymous safe space is to you. It's clearly challenging for you to be open and honest with your identity. It just takes a little bit of courage. If you take it slowly, in stages, I'm sure you'll eventually be able to outgrow your... Oh, how dear, how dear, how this professor wants all the world to be exactly how he says it to be. Now listen here. If people on YouTube do want to shut their faces, they're going to show it whenever they feel like doing that. And not just because some random cuckold told them to do so. Because hey, you're seeing, you're seeing my face here because I chose, I chose it to. Of course, uh... Of course, start the long process again to make myself a completely different person. But yeah, with the hair here, <laughs> it's a start. It's a start. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see about we'll see about that over time. Man, I, I should have pulled this thing like say a whole, whole lot a whole lot longer before. But hey, fuck it. I guess it is. Then again, come to think about it, what the fucking hell? Wait. What the fucking hell am I am I even doing now? I look completely fucking bald now. <laughs> <laughs> really horrible idea. Hey. But at least in this way here, I kinda of feel like a again like a bit of a sonic character or like a like a freaking punk anyways. Like a girl, I'd say over my, over my, over my eye here, and like a uh, uh, emu and whatnot. <laughs> well, that's gonna take on self here quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of time, but not. But hey, the hair grows here. I might, I might, uh, you know. Which which way do you think it looks better? You know, the right here, the right, which is this side here that I'm pulling to, or the left? As you know, I'm gonna have to make my hair grow and whatnot. Of course, make the. Uh, Stereotypical god complex lookalike bullshit. But my opinion, fuck it, I'd say. All right, there we go. Does it sense this bastard that anyway talking about real life identity lookalike? Fucking idiot. <laughs> now, sure, I've seen the video where he says that he was gonna quit YouTube anyway. That's not worth it. It's not so one of my New Year's resolutions, as I said, is I'm gonna cut down on this side of things. And yes, I because he's a British. What's he's a British? I have like a a Kim star with a British accent. Simple, as simple as that. Hey, now you're a Kim star. <laughs> get your favorite, get your popcorn, MLG. <laughs> I have heard accounts that it was because someone threatened his family. But oh. honestly, if you see how smug Moriarty is about bearing getting dogs. And showing the screenshots. I, I, I don't know. This, this was. This was. Ah, <sighs> hold on a sec. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go to this again. Again. Hey, now you're a you're you're a Keemstar lyrics. Hey, don't actually didn't make myself make myself feel like here too. Somebody. Now again, we raise the volume of this one. Give to this one here. Told me Wait. Somebody this is Encyclopedia Dramatica. This is Encyclopedia Dramatica. This is encyclopedia fucking dramatica. You can maybe see why it happened. You know the insincerity as he's reveling, reveling in talking about this Encyclopedia Dramatica article that docks Bering and called him a pedophile. But shouldn't Moriarty take those threats made because he was gloating about Bering getting doxxed and called a pedophile seriously? I mean, obviously, everyone who gets involved in that sort of drama is in immediate physical danger. Yeah, right. I think Moriarty actually best sums up how seriously these threats are in reality best here. This, this, is, a, this is what we were discussing in the Hangout. There's credulity and this is credulity. This is beyond Pizzagate. 
It's beyond pizza kid. I know you're pissed off, Patrick. I know. And if I again, that's a level of credulity that's that's beyond belief, Patrick. Go on, keep going. Now, if you want my reckoning, and this is just a reckoning. There was real blowback of some sort in Moriarty's life. It's quite possible that some of the friends of Moriarty's kids, say for instance, were actually Baring fans. Especially if Baring was pulling in half a million hits per day. Oh, Even wow. Phil Mason, Thunderfoot, with whom I've had many debates. Even he has said your particular style is not his cup of tea. And that's for Phil Mason. Yeah, that's right, Professor. I'm not a great fan of Baring. Not quite my cup of tea. But you know what else I'm not a great fan of? A lot of the University of Nottingham videos. Indeed, I had to stop watching them because of the stuff like the alkali metals where you're just completely factually wrong on a high school chemistry type level. And when I wrote a rather polite email to try and get it corrected, he just ignored it. Hell, I don't want to sound too catty, but a lot of the videos there are just the sort of speculative talk you would get at coffee breaks in a science department. You know, the sort of thing that would be far better and more accurately addressed by five minutes of reading on Wikipedia. I, so yeah, I basically had to stop watching the videos, just like with the Young Turks, <laughs> because otherwise I would be making busted videos about that. And honestly, there are better targets for me to prioritize. And while I do wish you would actually get some decent scientists to fact check those videos, I do appreciate the general idea of what the University of Nottingham is trying to achieve. Yeah, Bering isn't my cup of tea, but so what? He still, if you take his half million hits per day, is pulling in five times the traffic that this channel does. So what's your point? I'm pretty sure that Bering doesn't sit there at the beginning of the day thinking, I wonder if Thunderfoot will like this. And quite rightly so, because if he were, he wouldn't be getting half a million hits per day. And Which is a true fact. And also then again, I do have to say, like, if I do keep my, let, let my hair grow on for, let's say, quite a bit of a while, <laughs> I do believe I'm starting to look handsome. Yes, you know, my in a initial phase of looking handsome and whatnot. Of course, it's still very pretty damn, damn early and whatnot, but fuck it. Let it go, let it grow. <laughs> and finally, on the doxing, with Christine Winter's involvement in it. Right. So within five or six days of, of, of ED releasing this, this docs article, right, this, this horrendous docs article that, that, that labels me a fucking pedophile for Christ's sake, within five or six days, Christine Winters shared, shares that, that, that link three or four times in, in, in various different comment sections. I've got screenshots of, of all of them. And that's meant yeah, to mean that she's behind it? I don't understand. We're talking about the evidence for Christy being responsible for doxing you. How is that meant to support your case that she's responsible for doxing you? First off, don't argue with the Keemstar because he's always going to bash shit on you. Because you know he hates you. But then again, things are pretty simple on YouTube. You love a YouTuber, he loves you back. Simple as that. But if he treats you like shit, why the fucking hell would you bother that with that guy? Of course, the YouTube drama could be quite useful and whatnot, but then again, is it, is it really worth it? And again, depends the depends the type of individual, because, you know, this going, this going around to doxing just like this and this, just because, boom, just because of small-time bullshit. Sorry, but count me out. I better just have, it, have let's say, a bit of argument with, you know, another YouTuber, even if it's for YouTube drama, by keep it. Vocally, not virtually, not physically, not even spiritually, just vocally. Because, you know, it's, it seems to be like the, mo the best fun there is. And hey, at least it is fun. As it's been said before, remarkable claims require Ooh. remarkable evidence. You know what else, Phil? Unremarkable claims require unremarkable evidence. Christy, Christy, Christy actively pushed around my, my, my personal information, my sensitive information. So, so, uh, what, what, in what that, sense uh, that wasn't that wasn't already publicly available? In what sense did she do that? I've not seen any evidence for that at all. What is known is that Fisty was there taking screenshots of Encyclopedia Dramatica on the very day that Bering was docked, and was happily going around promoting that page, and that her friend was central in reporting Bering to the people who filed the copyright takedowns of his channel. You know, there's an element of grudge here. 
Now, let me let you in on the secret. I, wanting nothing to do with doxing, don't want anyone's dox for any reason, let alone going around taking screenshots of that shit on the very day it was released and promoting it. Hey, hang on. What date did you say this website released my dox? On or about December 6th. And what date did you say you took these screenshots? On December 6th, when I took this screenshot two days ago. Wow, so the day that this website releases my docs, which you had nothing to do with, you just so happened to be front and centre to have a good look at it. That is a coincidence. Hell, even back in the Venom Fang X days, I didn't want to know who he was, because then I couldn't be accused of anything. Hell, the nearest I ever got to this was with Laughing Witch, you know, the one who ran the letter writing campaign <laughs> to my employer to try to get me fired. And even at that, I didn't take a swing at her <laughs> until she actually put out the video Ooh. saying she'd been docked <laughs> and that there was nothing, absolutely nothing, that anyone could do to her. And yet, you only have to look at the ratings of the video to appreciate that your average person sees this as beautiful internet karma. Mm -hmm. And you, Phil, you're a real piece of work accusing everyone else of being a coward before deleting your accounts and going and hiding offline. You know, I would have a little more sympathy for you here had you not danced a little jig when Tim Hunt got lynched by lying feminists. And the professor was so clear that of course people have the freedom to say what they want. They just had to deal with the consequences of that. So have I said, academic freedom, freedom of speech, he's absolutely free to say whatever silly thing he likes. But it has consequences. And he's seeing those consequences. Do I want to see the man in tears? I, you know, it's honestly the first. This is Encyclopedia Dramatica. This is Encyclopedia fucking Dramatica. And I couldn't care less who you are. But what I do care is that you lack the intellectual integrity, courage, and just the courage in general, to actually do this slagging off to make your points without hiding behind the cartoon. Do you want to see anybody reduced to, to tears like he and his wife? Of course not. Absolutely, of course not. But on the other hand, when you say things, there are consequences. But what age are you, Patrick? I'm 32. So start look at, uh, acting like a 32-year-old. You own that copyright. We've sorted out that dispute. It's none of your fucking business. We've, we've, we've come to terms with, <laughs> with, with an agreement. We've moved forward. What's the fuck it's do? none of your fucking business. You put this stuff out publicly on YouTube. How is it not? It's out in the public domain. None of my fucking business. Why? Um, so you do this. You put it out there. If it were private material, fine. Yeah, I'm beginning to see how this works. Those are just the standards for everyone else to be held accountable to. All those other uh, weakling professors and Nobel Prize winners. While you and your co-workers should never be held accountable for anything. And you know what, Professor? It's at times like this that you can be thankful that all of those anti-feminists that you were so vitriolic about, that they are bigger men than you. That they're more mature adults than you. Boom. Destroyed. Annihilated. With a better understanding of free speech than you. Because believe me, Professor, if you were treated like you treated everyone else, at this point, your ass would be grass. <laughs> uh, I had enough for the time being, but... Well, the fuck can I say? If, uh, you know, if there's dodgers there. If there's not, then simply just walk away. As simple as that! For fuck's sake! Ugh. I know, man. So they sure they really they sure they certainly really did grow up to something else different now didn't it? Of course. And the video I uh my beauty is gonna level a one level up. <laughs> Which is of course quite funny to say the least, actually. But ironic too, but hey. The fucking hell can I do? I mean then again Thunderfoot's quite a smart guy. Speaking of which Let's see. Hold on. Hold on a second. I know I hit the, the gun accidentally here. Let's see. Bearing. Don't fuck me over. And of course, there was my 
with my subscription on him and whatnot. Good old bear bearing. Good old bear bearing. So yes, and again, I hope you just enjoyed this one as much as I did. As a... Uh, uh, hold on a sec. There you go. Just I gotta say, put it a little bit, a, a little bit more up, because you know, I get myself the right angle for this one. <laughs> so yes, and again, I hope you just this one much as I did. Uh, as a... Uh, look forward to the next one. So uh, I'll see you next time, and until then. Uh,